Hi guys, I'm Daniel and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be going over the 1999 American Bowling Congress Masters from Syracuse, New York as you see there, the On Center. Um, and uh, in today's title match, we have, as the commentators say, uh, as Gary Siebel says, David versus Goliath. So in this instance, um, David would be uh, Brian Bogosian, the amateur uh, from Massachusetts. And in this case, um, Goliath would be Parker Bum III um, from New Jersey, one of the greatest lefties um, on tour at this point, and definitely one of the most winningest players of uh, the seasons that surrounded this in the late 90s, um, leading up to this tournament. And just as you see there, in the 1999 season, he had already won two times up to this point um, in the 98-99 season. So let's get started here. Parker Mon the third off to a great shot there with a strike. Um, in the previous uh, match, we had a round of uh, three, which Brian Bogosian, the number two seed, uh, was a part of. And uh, he beat out uh, Ricky Ward, the number four seed, and Tom Baker, the number three seed. There's a very recognizable name, a coach out of California and Nevada these days. All right, so Brian Bogosian's first shot out of the gate. Leaves a four pin. As you can see, he's a much straighter player, right-handed. Um, very uh, good bowler, and this is his first ever career TV appearance um, because he's he's not a PBA member. He's made it this far in the Masters. Um, he actually, in 1997 at the ABC Masters, so two years before this telecast, he got sixth place and led the third round of qualifying. Now he, he makes the four pin there. Probably going to make a little bit of an adjustment on that right lane. Could could have been a little bit of nerves as well. Always kind of hard to tell, but definitely with it being his first ever television title match, he's probably feeling some nerves, especially bowling against Parker Bum III, one of the greatest on tour for that season, if not the greatest for that season. <clears throat> All right, let's see what he does here for his second shot of the match. Looks a lot better than the last one. Ooh, rings a 10 pin, ball deflected a little bit. Uh, I believe he's throwing the Columbia 300 Original Chaos, uh, the one that they made the remake of um, last year. And uh, really, really good ball for its time. As you see on his shirt, too, he has the logo in the left corner. And has, of course, a, 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 a silver uh, plastic ball for his spares from the Columbia 300. Probably a, a blue dot or a white dot. <clears throat> and of course, Parker Bone the third at the time, um, I believe, was with uh, Brunswick staff, as we can see on his uh, shirt there. <clears throat> so Parker Bone the third out to an early uh, slight lead up in the second now, throwing a zone as well with a high gain this week of 268 and a low of 147, as you saw on the graphic there. Looks very determined as well. Looks like another pretty good shot. Leaves a six pin. Um, so in the match before this, the round of three, like I said, uh, Ricky Ward was the only lefty. And then, of course, there was Tom Baker and Brian Bogosian who were right-handers. And so um, that kind of can affect uh, part of the third's line on whatever they're bowling on. Um, you know, it was much different as far as oil goes back in the, the late 90s compared to what we have now. They didn't necessarily have the, the lane graphs and... Uh, the things that we have now that are uh, that are honestly blessings for us now, um, and sometimes they're curses too. They can cause us to overthink things a lot. Um, certainly, uh, an interesting idea of that, um, but that hadn't quite started at this point. All right. So, uh, and by the way, a cool note about Parker on the third. To this point in his career, he had never won a major. Um, as you see there, uh, just this year he had bowled in 11 tournaments, got seven caches, and, and uh, I mean he had he had never won a major to this point in his career. Leaves a flat seven there. The four pin kind of leaned over in the gutter in a bad way, and uh, as you see right there too, uh, through 10 tournaments already in that season. Uh, he had $59,000, a little more than that, and Chris Barnes in second. Uh, cool to see Doug Kent, Steve Jaros, and, and Rudy Kazimakis. Rudy Kazimakis, a lot of people don't know about. Uh, his nickname was Rudy Revs. He bowled on the uh, the outdoor uh, New York City experience telecast that I've watched uh, in the late 90s. I don't remember exactly what year it was. 
Um, maybe maybe it was in 99 or, or 98, but it was a really cool telecast. <clears throat> Alright, let's see what Brian Bogosian does here. Looks like a better shot, and high flush. Kind of hard to tell with that camera angle, but it did look like a little better shot off of his hand. So, great job there for Brian. And as you can see, too, I'm wearing my older style uh, jersey, colored jersey here, to kind of replicate what they've got going on. Of course, mine isn't as cool. It doesn't say chaos on it. It has some bowling pins, though, and some flames. <laughs> But, um, yes, so continuing on, um, and uh, another cool note about uh, Brian, he won by a lot in the in the uh, round of three right before this, the game before this, as he goes high flush there. He shot 245 the game before this, and his opponents, Tom Baker and Ricky Ward, shot 158 and 169 respectively. So, the... Uh, the conditions were very tough, and, and Brian playing straighter like he was definitely uh, definitely was an advantage for him. He's keeping the ball in line great and just kind of putting it right in the pocket like you want to. All right, so we got Parker on the third here. Some great form, too. The knee bend is insane. And, oh, almost gets the messenger, but doesn't quite. Almost got it. It's kind of like one of mine. <laughs> I do that a lot. And you got Brian changing his uh, thumb tape out there in the ball. And watch this. So the head pin goes across and barely nicks the seven pin, but doesn't quite knock it over. And, of course, they are using the uh, the golden pins. Um, there you go, Parker getting the spare. So uh, they're using the golden pins on the telecast today, which they did not use in qualifying. Um, they used their standard white pins in qualifying and went to the golden pins for the TV finals. So, fifth frame now, Parker Moon the third is down 11 pins to Brian Bogosian. 6-0 in match play for that week. Alright, let's see. He likes it. Oh, gets a lucky break. Oh, and you see the reaction there. Tripping the, the three pin and the six pin, kind of splitting them sideways. Interesting break there. Let's watch this again. Man. So that five pin trips right to the late. Uh, trips late to the right. And uh, definitely got a lucky break there on the 3 6. Alright, let's see what Brian McGosian does here in his fifth frame to answer Parker's lucky break. High flush. Great shot to get the 7 out. And so, about the format for this tournament, too. Uh, they talked about it earlier in the telecast. So. There were um, 497 bowlers that bowled for this tournament in uh, Syracuse, New York. And they bowled 10 games. All of them bowled 10 games. The first cut was to the top 125 bowlers after those 10 games. Then they bowled five more games. Then they had a second cut to the top 64, um, like the Masters is now. Uh, top 64 double elimination match play until the top four remained, and that's what we're seeing now. Um, is the top two from those top four. So Brian with another great shot there going high flush. Ran it out just a little bit at the end there. Just love to see that. Getting a lot of energy going in as well. Parker now down 31 to Brian. All right, so as we see here, coming down the sixth frame for Parker on the third. <clears throat> so now coming down to it, we got Parker on the third here. <clears throat> up in his sixth frame. And he's coming off of that lucky break too, remember the trip 3-6 that he had. Rather weird break, but very lucky for him. And looks good, high flush, barely gets the seven out. Great kick from the four on the seven. He's got a lot more energy now. You can tell that he definitely wants to win his first major with this uh, telecast here in these finals. See, plenty of energy, walking it out, giving it the fist pumps. Love to see it. All right. Something cool, too, I love seeing the ball returns that they had in the, the air where it comes out of at the front there. All right, so seventh frame for Parker. And uh, let me say, too, the champion of this tournament gets $40,000. Second is 24000 as we see Parker's light mixer gets the six out. That was a great, great shot. 
And uh, uh, continuing on, third place is 16 grand, and fourth place is 11 grand. So that's a total for the top four of $250,000. Quarter of a million dollars. Or sorry, not just for the top four, but for the tournament as a whole. Yes, yeah, $250,000 for the tournament as a whole. As you can see, Parker kind of laughs off that break there. Um, then he got that light mixer with the, the six pin falling to the side. Now Brian in his seventh frame. And ooh, man, what a good shot to ring a 10 pin on. As you see there, the ring 10 kind of, that definitely cost him some pins. He definitely could have could have uh, made a big push there against Parker um, with that strike. But ball deflects a little bit as you saw there. I'm um, still throwing the chaos. And uh, definitely a good shot though. And it's really interesting to see the layouts uh, for these bowlers as well on their balls. Um, <clears throat> is Brian, oh, he barely makes the spare. All right. Looked kind of like it was going to fall in the gutter for a second there. Um, so back to uh, the layouts on their bowling balls. Um, as you see with uh, Brian Bogosian still throwing the chaos coming up in the eighth frame here. Parker on the third down, 10 pins still. So you see the, the pin is just above the bridge for him. Um, pretty close to his uh, to the top right corner of his ring or middle finger, excuse me. Um, and that's kind of interesting to see just with the layouts and how they were back then. Um, definitely seems to work for him on this telecast today. Looks great right there. Throws it high flush. <clears throat> and uh, with Parker Bowen the third's uh, zone that he's throwing, uh, Brunswick ball. Um, you can kind of see, well, as we see a replay of Brian shot here before, uh, that um, looks great, goes high flush, gets the 10 out great with a really big kick from the 6. So a great shot from Brian. And now to Parker on the 3rd in the 8th frame. It's not quite going to show it here, but um, Parker on the 3rd has, and that's a really good shot there, high flush. Uh, his layout is, um, I believe... That it is the pin is right next to uh, his uh, middle finger, or that'd be ring finger, ring finger, excuse me, uh, right next to his ring finger. Um, he's left-handed, so I kind of had to flip it in my brain. <laughs> it's just really interesting to see that. Definitely uh, um, going to get that pin a little closer to his PAP, make it a little more aggressive of a layout. Um, as you didn't see, guys, back then with a whole lot of um, constant uh, you know, ball changes or anything like that. So another really good shot goes high flush. That was an awesome shot from Parker Moon III. So that really puts him in the match. They're dead even now with that spare from Brian and uh, the double from Parker there. They're dead even as he stares down the camera and gives us some fist pumps. <clears throat> So this has turned out to be a really, really good title match for a major. Brian coming up in the ninth. He can tie it up here with another strike to put the double together on the spare. Looks good. Oh, it's high flush. Perfect shot from Brian. That's incredible from an amateur um, performing like he has been. He's shooting really well on this telecast. That's pretty awesome from, uh, from an amateur like that. So, a lot of respect for Brian in this situation. Especially with it being his first ever time bowling on television. As they said earlier in the telecast, that's incredible. Alright, so now it comes down to it. If Brian throws all three strikes in the tenth, then he cannot be shut out. Or he, uh, Parker Bowman III cannot win, but he could tie. If they both throw all three in the tenth, they'll tie. So, let's see what Brian does here. Looks like a great shot. Oh, gets the light mixer. Ball just didn't hook up like it had been, but it just kind of sat there and looked great. Got the light mixer out. A lot of energy from Brian, as you saw there. So that's really important. So that makes Parker Bowen III get the first hit in the 10th because whatever Brian does, Parker Bowen III can match to tie. Um, so let's see, uh, let's see what Brian does here. Second shot in the 10th frame. Can shoot 258 as well as, of course, Parker Bowman III's max is 258. <clears throat> so one more strike here forces Parker Bowman III to double, and the strike after that would force Parker Bowman III to get all three strikes in the tenth to tie. 
Oh, that looks way left. Oh, and he leaves the 3-6. Or, oh, maybe the uh, the three pin got rolled out uh, late. Let's, let's take a look at the the replay whenever it shows it here in a second. Um, and it'll uh, it'll show us. All right, there we go. So this will show us uh, how late that that three pin got rolled out. Let's see. As you hear Marshall up, they kind of cut it short. All right, so let's see if that pin. Let's see how close it was hitting the machine. Oof, man, that is that was just before. So why that nine count is important rather than the eight is because now Parker won the third. If he goes strike nine spare, it's a tie. But before, if uh, the three pin wouldn't have fallen and Brian would have gotten an eight count on that shot, Parker could have gone strike nine spare to win by a pin. So that's why that the. Uh, the count is very important because he was on a double. So now, Parker on the third must throw a double in the tenth uh, to win the match and his first ever major. <clears throat> so let's see if he can perform here. He's been throwing it really well, this telecast. Let's see. Looks a little wide. Oh, he leaves a bucket. Dang. So that's going to leave Parker on the third at 19 titles for his career at this point. And he doesn't have a major yet, but that leaves Brian Bogosian, an amateur, to win the 1999 ABC Masters. That's pretty awesome. As you see there, Parker on the third, just, it looked like he got it a little bit wide. And it was tough out there, you know, the, the conditions were, were not easy. And so if you leak it a little wide like that, it's probably not going to come back too much. So, as you see, Brian breathing relief right there, and Parker just throws a spare ball down the lane. Man. That's awesome, though. Uh, Syracuse, New York. Brian Bogosian won the 1999 ABC Masters. And as we see there, 247 to 231, Brian Bogosian defeated Parker Bone III for the 1999 ABC Masters title, a major championship. And as we see there, Marshall Holman doing the check presentation to Brian. What an insane moment. Um, I believe that made Brian the sixth ever um, amateur to win the Masters in the history of the PBA. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, I hope that uh, everything's going well with the uh, the virus is still going around, you know, still here in my home. Um, so thank you guys for tuning in, and be sure to subscribe below. Leave a comment with future uh, telecasts that you would like me to uh, go over and react to and provide my perspective on for you guys. And uh, other than that, guys, leave a like as well. Thank you. Peace.